I'm looking at John chapter 15, verse 1 through 8. Beautiful presence of the Lord here tonight. It's always a privilege when we begin to feel the presence of God. And uh, where the presence of the Lord is, there is fullness of joy. There's hope, there's peace, there's victory, everything that we need. It's like, man, if we can get into the presence of God, I know everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to work out. If we can make that our habitation, our dwelling place, everything will be all right. I'm looking at John 15, verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. I want to kind of teach for a few minutes. I'm slowing down for a couple reasons. One is my voice, and uh, so bear with me. But I want to go and kind of walk through this scripture a little bit and just talk to you from the, the title, Abide. Abide. If we can, I know we've been praying, but let's pray one more time that our hearts would be open and God would give us ears to hear and receive what he has for us. Jesus, we love you tonight. God, I thank you, Lord, for what we feel in this house. Lord, it's a privilege, God, to come into the house of God and be able to feel what we feel here tonight. God, we don't take it for granted, but Lord, it's a privilege. Lord, it's our honor to be here in your house and in your presence. And Lord, I know that you have something for us. God, I know there's things that you want us to hear, things you want us to receive things that you want to do in us. And God, I pray that you would give us ears to hear, give us hearts to receive. Lord, help us to embrace, Lord, what you are doing here tonight. Lord, in Jesus' name, we believe you for it. In Jesus' name. God bless you guys. You can be seated. You know, Jesus said here, starting off, he says, I am the true vine. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. If we break down this verse a little bit, for one, a vine carries all necessary nutrients to the branches that are connected to it. Not long ago at Redeemed, we we talked about connections. You know, we've all gotten connected to things uh, that we regretted after a while. In our life, you all can think back about things we got connected to, people we got connected to, things we got connected to that we regretted. 
And we talked about things we get connected to that have a terms of use. Terms of use, I'm sure you've seen this before. If you have been on the internet at all, then you've probably seen a terms of use agreement pop up. That uh, it's defined as terms of use are rules or specifications and requirements for the use of a product or service. That it serves as a contract between the product or the service provider and the user. If you've ever gotten on Wi-Fi, you probably have done it here tonight. UPC, POD guest. There is usually a terms of use. When you get on the internet at a coffee shop and you're going to use their internet, there is a terms of use that'll pop up. And you have to scroll through about 100 pages to get to the bottom where it says click yes. You are agreeing to the terms of use. I'm like you. I read every word of that. And I make sure, I, usually my, the coffee shop is closed by the time I finish reading it. And I click yes, agree to the terms, and I get to use the Wi-Fi. I have never read past terms of use, scroll to the bottom, get me to the checkbox that I can go ahead and use it. Same with the Wi-Fi. How about accepting cookies on a website? You ever been, got on a website and all of a sudden, do you accept the terms? Of course I do. Just get me to the website. I'm ready to do some shopping. I'm ready to buy something. Whatever it is, we click without thinking anything about it. We don't even know what we've just agreed to, but we've checked the box, accept. I, I, I accept everything in that 100-page document. Just let me use the service. You know, there are things we are connecting to all the time that we are agreeing to certain terms. We connect because we see a benefit. We want to get on the Wi-Fi. You, you see a benefit. That's why you're checking the box and accepting the terms because you see a benefit in using the service. But we have to be careful because there are things we connect to all the time in the natural that have a spiritual terms of use attached to it. And you probably know what I'm talking about. These are things we connect to sometimes that rob us of our happiness, that rob us of our joy. I'm not preaching against social media, but I have gotten on social media and I can't be on there for more than about three minutes that some of my happiness is not gone. Some of my peace is not gone. Some of my joy is not gone. I can't get on the news without losing a certain degree of my peace of mind, of my happiness, of, uh, of my joy. Uh, usually I, I feel lower and I feel angrier than I did before I got on. And there's no box that I'm clicking. You, you can't see it. I'm not clicking on a box that says, yes, I agree to the terms, but I am agreeing to the terms when I engage in the activity or I connect to something that does have a terms of use. I'm not preaching against the news or social media, but I'm telling you, we, we connect to things all the time that sometimes have a much darker, darker and deeper terms of use than we ever knew about. That there are, there are things that we're agreeing to when we connect to it that have a spiritual terms of use. That if you're going to get involved in this, this is what comes with it. We live in a connected world. We are constantly connected to something. And you will either be connected to God or you will be connected to something else. One thing I've realized is that the devil hides his terms of use. He invites us in with what seem like benefits. No strings attached. It's fun. It's freedom. He is the ultimate marketer. You know what marketers do? They're paid to pump up a product and make it look really good, make it look enticing so that you will go and take your heart on money and spend it on that to find out it doesn't live quite up to what the commercial showed. He is the ultimate marketer. Look at this, man. This is beautiful. This is fun. This is what you need. This is what you've been missing. This is what's going to bring fulfillment. This is what's going to bring joy. This is what's going to bring some contentment into your life. And there's no, there's no mention of what is coming with it. There's no mention of the terms of use, but there is a terms of use that comes with it and he hides it. But I've realized with God, he makes the terms clear. There's also a terms of use when you want to get connected to the things of God. There are certain things that you are agreeing to when you get in connection with God. If you look all the way back where Abraham entered into a covenant with God, but the terms were clear up front. 
The devil doesn't give the terms up front. Usually you find about it the hard way. You're like, why am I dealing with this? And then you come to find out on the back end, oh, it's because I agreed to that five years ago. That's why all this turmoil, that's why all this chaos, that's why all this junk is happening in your life or in your family. But Abraham entered into a covenant, which was a promise that God made with Abraham. And according to the covenant, God would offer protection and land to Abraham and his descendants. And he would make a great and mighty nation of him. But they must follow the path of God. There was a terms of use. You got to do things my way, Abraham. You got to follow after me. You're going to have to walk in faith. But if you will do this, then I will do that. Here's what God's terms of use looks like. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. These are the terms of use for you and I. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. There is a terms of use with God. And he ends up saying in verse 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. God's terms of use is clear. If you do things my way, if you will abide in me, if you will stay connected to me, then I will stay connected to you and your joy will be full. And what you pray for, it will be done for you. And, and there are a lot of benefits that come with connecting to God. But there's a terms of use with God as well. But he doesn't hide his terms of use. The terms of use are up front. The devil hides his as best he can. Because if you saw what comes with what we are connecting to sometimes, we would be within a thousand miles from it if we realized what it was going to bring into our home and what it was going to bring into our family and how it was going to attack our mind and what we were going to struggle with. We would want nothing to do with it. So he hides the terms of use. Because if you understood it, if you knew what was behind that entertainment, if you knew what was behind that thing that you're connecting to, you would say, I do not want that in my life. I'm not welcoming in depression. I'm not welcoming in fear. I'm not welcoming in lust. I'm not welcoming in the garbage that comes with that terms of use. There are all kinds of connections we can have that feed something into our spirit. But Jesus says he is the true vine. He is the true vine. We can connect to all kinds of things that feed something into you. Whether you realize it or not, there's something flowing into you when we connect to certain things. But Jesus says he is the true vine. That anything else that you or I would get connected to for help or for fulfillment or for strength, for peace, is an imitation of what is available to us through a close walk with God. He is the true vine. He is the true source of peace. We're not going to find it anywhere else. He is the true source of joy. We're not going to find it anywhere else. We will find a level of joy and contentment in our family and accomplishments. And that also is part of the will of God. But nothing can replace the joy unspeakable and full of glory that is found only in a connection with Jesus Christ. He is the true vine. Everything else falls short or is an imitation of what we have available to us when we connect to the things of God. And then verse 2, it says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Every person professing to be a Christian that doesn't show evidence that we are under the influence and direction of the Holy Ghost, he will take away. Every branch that bears fruit or that shows it is under the influence of the Holy Ghost, that it is led of God, that it is becoming more like Him. And this is over time. This is a process, by the way. We don't become like Him overnight. We don't come to God and, and just immediately we have no issues and no hang-ups. And, and you know, God works stuff out of us over a process. But as long as we are abiding in Him and connected to Him and allowing Him to influence our decisions and the steps that we take, He is leading us to a place where we become more and more like Him. And every person that is in that process, he prunes or cleanses and purifies so that we can be more like him. He isn't going to leave you alone. Someone look at your neighbor and say, he's working on me. 
Be patient with me. God, God is working on me. I know I've got issues. I know I've got some hangups, but you know what? God is working on me. That's part of the reason why I'm here. That's why I'm here in the presence of God. I, I need this. I need him. He's, he's working on me. And you know what? He's not going to leave me alone. He's going to continue to work on me. He said he prunes the branches so that they may bear more fruit. He cleanses and purifies like pure as gold. Those that abide in him so that they can bear more fruit, so that he can have more glory, so that we can be more like him. And then verse 3 said, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. This does not mean that they were perfect, by the way. It means that they were yielded to him. They were in the process since they met him of surrendering their wills to him and allowing him to make them clean and pure. They were in the process. And someone needs to know tonight that God didn't call you because you were perfect. You probably already knew that. That God did not call you because you had it all together. He didn't fill you with his his spirit because you were clean and perfect. He didn't allow you to feel his presence and what we felt here tonight because we have our act all together. But it's because he loves us. He loves you. He loves me. He wants to work in our lives. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, he loved you and me enough to go to a cross and die for our sins. How happy is he when one of his creation that was lost in their sin, separated from him because of sin, turns to him And comes back to him and says, I want you to be Lord of my life. How happy is God when a sinner realizes that my creator, my God, that I need you and turns back towards that creator. Luke 15 and 10 describes some of this here. It says, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repents. I'm telling you, God is happy. Heaven rejoices when one of God's creation turns back towards him in repentance. I can't begin to tell you the joy in heaven when what just one sinner turns back towards God in repentance. It gets all of heaven's attention when one of his creation turns back towards God, who was once separated and cut off from God. Second Peter chapter 3, 8 through 10 says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, that not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God desires for people to be right with him, to turn back towards him. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long suffering, not willing that any should perish. That God has not come back for his church yet. He's, it's a, it's a a space of grace. It's a time where people have the opportunity to turn back towards God. Now is that time. It's not down the road. It's not when he comes back. It's not when he sets up his millennial kingdom. Now is the time that God has decided, I'm giving people some room. I'm giving some people room to get right. I'm giving some people room to to connect back to the things of God, to connect back to their creator. All over the world, you have people denying the existence of the God that made them. I'm telling you, they teach it to our kids in our schools. They try and indoctrinate, indoctrinate it in our children that, they're, that, that how our earth was created. How much of it is a slap in the face to God when his creation denies his existence and his greatness? When the Bible talks about in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke it into existence. And yet a good portion of his creation says it was a random explosion in space. It was aliens or it was some God that man made up on their own and said, this is what caused us all to be here. This is the one that put things in motion. How much of a slap of the face to God is it when his own creation that he formed, that he breathed life into, denies his existence? But you know what? What joy in heaven when someone turns towards God. What joy in heaven when one of that creation begins worshiping and giving honor and recognition to the God that set it all in motion. 
What a sweet smelling fragrance our worship is to God. You think God doesn't notice you, but God knows who you are. He knows who you are. He knows that you're worshiping him. He knows that you desire to live a life that is pleasing to him. And this pleases him that you have a desire to please him. He knows that you have a heart for the things of God. He knows that you have a love and a desire to please him and to live for him. And God notices that. Not everybody in creation is doing that. Not everybody in creation is turning back towards their creator and pushing other things aside to connect with the one that made them. So when someone does, what joy, what notice it takes in heaven when when us begin reaching towards heaven and we start trying to reach for the things of God and connect back to our creator. Heaven takes notice. If you want heaven's attention, be a worshiper. If you want heaven's attention, let God be the Lord in your life. Let him be the king of kings. Let him be the Lord of lords. Let him guide and direct our steps. Present your body as a living sacrifice to him. Let him work through you. Let him guide and order your steps. Your Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You want favor with God? Present your body as a living sacrifice. Let God be the Lord of your life. Let him lead you. Worship him in spirit and in truth. And you know what? After we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, what comes after that is the transformation by the renewing of the mind, which comes after we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. After we put him in control and we say, God, whatever you want, Lord, you're the Lord. God, I'm the servant. Lord, you're the creator. I'm the creation. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I will do. You know what? It gives God permission to start working and moving in us in ways that he could not before when we allow him to be God and us to be the servant. And then verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Jesus is saying that you remain attached to me, then I will remain attached to you. If you keep following my example, if you keep obeying my word, if you stay dependent on me, then, then, God will remain with us. He will continue to teach us. He will continue to guide us. He will continue to comfort us, strengthen us, change us, and mold us into his image. You know, we can have all of God that we desire. If I will remain in him, he will continue working in me. He will continue working in my life. He will continue giving me the help and the strength, the grace that I need to make it on a daily basis if I will remain in him. He says, if you remain in me, I will remain in you. It's a terms of use. It's an agreement that, hey, if you will keep following after me, if you will keep walking in my ways, if you will abide in me, then I will abide in you. I will remain with you. I will help you. You know, the more I depend on him, the more I realize how much I need him. You ever met somebody who needed help, but they didn't really know it? It's probably been us before. I can think of times where it was probably me. I mean someone who desperately needed help. You could see it, but they couldn't. Everybody could see it. They think they have it all together. That's kind of how it is with us, without God in our life. We think we are good. When in reality, we are lost, we are helpless, we are broken. And when we start walking with God, we start realizing just how much we need him. And the more I abide in him, the more I realize how, fall, how far I fall short. 
and how much he makes up the difference and how much I start depending on him. And, and when we first come to him, it may just be for salvation and that's it. But you start walking with God and it goes way beyond just saving my soul. I start realizing I need him and help with every area of my life from my marriage to my, my parenting, my kids, to working on the job, to dealing with people, literally every part of my life. I realize how much I need him and how much help he is giving. It's like revelation when you, you're, something is unveiled, something is uncovered and you begin to see how much you need him. This next verse outlines just that. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches in verse five. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. This is verse is saying that without him, the branch, we, the branch, immediately withers and dies. That without him, we can do nothing. Without Jesus, I'm nothing but a dead branch. I cannot produce fruit on my own. I can't make it on my own. I can't save myself. I can't deliver myself. I can't produce the fruit of the Spirit. I can't operate in the gifts of the Spirit. I literally can do nothing on my own. What God has done when he came and found us is he's walking along and he sees basically a dead branch on the ground and he has picked it up and he has grafted it into the vine, the true vine. And life sprung forth into a dead branch that began producing fruit that could not be produced on its own. I've never walked through the woods and seen a dead branch on the ground and said, I'm going to go take that home, put it in the ground, put some soil on it, water it, and then wait for the fruit to arrive. Usually you see a dead branch in the ground, you throw it on the fire. It's worthless at that point. It crackles, it's dry, There's, it's no good. This is who we were before God. Before God, we were dead branches. Before God, we were worthless. We were dead in our sins. But God has taken us, and he has grafted us into the true vine. And life sprung forth, and all of a sudden, fruit started producing in my life that I cannot produce on my own. God has done something in us. If you think I'm making it up, I'll read it to you. Nick actually read it earlier. Ephesians 2. One through six, it says, at one time you were dead because of your sins. You were the dead branch. I was the dead branch. You followed the sinful ways of the world and obeyed the leader of the power of darkness. He is the devil who is now working in the people who do not obey God. At one time, all of us lived to please our old selves. We gave in to what our bodies and our minds wanted. We were sinful from birth like all other people and would suffer from the anger of God. We were dead in our trespasses and sin. But God, so much loving kindness, he loved us with such a great love. Even when we were dead because of our sins, he made us alive. When he grafted us into the true vine, when we were born into the body of Christ, when we were baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost, we became alive in Christ Jesus. He made us alive by what Christ did for us. You have been saved from the punishment of sin by his loving favor. God raised us up from death. When he raised up Christ Jesus, he has given us a place with Christ in the heavens. He did this to show us through all time to come the great riches of his loving favor. He has shown us his kindness through Christ Jesus. The dead branch cannot produce that on its own. Without me, he said, you can do nothing. Without me, you will remain on the ground. Without me, you will be destroyed in the fire. Without me, you will never produce fruit. You will never produce anything worthwhile. You will never produce anything in the spiritual. But if you will let God, if you will get connected to the things of God, you will become alive and fruit will start to manifest in your life. And the things that you pray, God will start answering and God will start doing because you are abiding in him and he is abiding in you. It matters what we get connected to. You know, there are things we connect to in our lives that are robbing us of our peace, our joy, our comfort, our happiness, robbing us of our spirituality, our walk with God. That God will do something in us. We will connect to the things of God. 
we will get a breakthrough, we will, we will get some strength, we will get some help, and then we will disengage from that and we will plug right back into something that is robbing us, the, the thing that drained us and got us to where we were in the first place, we will plug right back into it, in part because we don't realize what's behind it. We don't realize the terms of use that comes with what we connect to on a weekly basis. But man, if, if we can just get connected to the things of God on a daily basis, every time we feel a check in our spirit about anything that we're getting connected connected to, watching, listening to, conversations we're engaged in, anything that can, that gives a check in our spirit that we might think, is this something that's going to rob me of something that me and God have going on? Then I don't want anything to do with it because I realize that all my help comes from him. All of my peace, all of my joy, all of my victory, everything comes from him. Everything else is a cheap imitation of what he has made available to me. If I will plug into the things of God, if I will connect to the things of the spirit, nothing else can replicate or manufacture what he is able to do in my life if I will abide in him. And some people would say, well, that's extreme. We go to church on Sunday. That should be good enough. Abide does not mean once or twice a week. Abide means you are staying connected. He said, if you abide in me. He didn't say if we go to church on Sundays. I think, it's, I think God is pleased that we go to church on Sundays. We should go to church on Sundays. He didn't say, hey, if you go to church on Sundays, then man, I will work in your life. And he will to a certain degree. But where the transformation, where the renewing of the mind, where the power of God really comes into play is when we abide in him, when we connect to him and then never unplug, never disengage. I cannot connect to the things of God and the things of this world at the same time. I cannot connect to things that are ungodly and connect to God at the same time. I have to disengage from him and engage to something else that also is feeding me and pouring into me and something is coming with it, something is coming behind it. I cannot be connected to both worlds at the same time. I will either be connected to God or I will be connected to something else. This is why he said, abide in me and then I will abide in you. I think God's trying to help us tonight. You know, if you're here and and you've been struggling with something that you just can't seem to get over, you just can't seem to get the victory over, I would first check and see what am I connected to that might have allowed this to be a part of my life, that might have given permission for this to work in my life. What have I connected to that is robbing me of my peace of mind? What have I connected to that has brought depression into my spirit? What is, what, it's not from God. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Anxiety and the depression does not come from him. What have I connected to that has allowed some of this stuff to come into my life? Because whatever that is, I want to disengage from that and get plugged back into where the joy is and where the peace is and where the victory is. Every time I get connected to something that I can just feel, it started to drain the liberty and the freedom and the peace and the joy and, and the victory that you had on Sunday and I can, and you can feel that leaving, then that needs to be disconnected from and reconnected back into the things of God. And I'm closing here. If we can, let's stand to our feet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this thing up by saying God does not just want to visit us. He doesn't just want to visit us here on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. But God wants to abide with you. God wants to stay connected to you. More than we even want to be connected to him, God wants to be connected to us. He wants to dwell on the inside of you and I by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. To where we bear much fruit and become more like him. And it's, it is a promise that we, if we will abide in him, the fruit will follow. Like that, it's not like it's just going to happen for some people, but not me. 
The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. And it's, it's all these qualities, these characteristics. It's the nature of God. That when we connect to Him, it starts to become a part of our life. And we start to display those characteristics, that fruit in our life. And it is the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the fruit of the flesh. It's not the fruit of bread. It's not the fruit of POD. It's, not, it's something the pastor can't produce in you. I can't produce it in you, your family. It is the fruit of the Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that begins producing this in your life because we have connected to the things of God and we are abiding in Him. And the result is that, man, fruit begins to be born in our life. This is His desire is that we would abide in him and he could abide in us so that fruit could be produced. And if you're someone who's been struggling, feeling broken and imperfect and flawed, you need to know that God knew who you were when he first called you. God already knew your failures. He knew your mistakes. This does not shock or alarm God. God was already aware of everything, every mistake you would ever make. But God called you anyway. We need to stop beating ourselves up and abide in him. We make a mistake and we will disconnect from the things of God for a couple months or weeks because we feel unworthy. We feel like God doesn't love us. We feel God is disappointed with us when really what we need in that moment is to get reconnected back to the true vine as quick as possible because that's where the nutrients come from. That's where the peace, that's where the joy, that's where the fruit comes from. It comes when we are connected to him. It's not going to come any other way. It only comes when I connect to the things of God. We need to stop living in a less than mindset and just get connected to Him. Because if I'm connected to Him, I have all the resources that I need. All the nutrients necessary flow from the the vine to the branches. Every ounce of strength and grace and help and fruit I need, it's going to come because I'm connected to him. It's not going to come from anywhere else. The problems that we're facing, the stuff that we're going through, you know what? It's him. He is the answer. He is the source of all of it. You want to know how to defeat our inner battles? I'm telling you, the answer is abide. You want to know how to overcome the the strongholds in your mind? It's going to come when we abide. How do we defeat our enemies? Abide. How do I get victory over my flesh? Abide. How do I beat anxiety? Abide. How do I beat depression? Abide. How do I beat the the garbage and the junk that we have to fight? You know how I beat it? How I live an overcoming life? It's when I start abiding in Him. That is the only way I will live an overcoming life. That is the only way I will ever be able to say no to my flesh. He said, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The only way, the only way I can do it is if I abide in Him. And everything else I connect to that's been robbing me of my joy, of my peace, of my victory, of the breakthroughs and the promises that God has for me, then I want to unplug that junk from my life as quick as I can so that the peace and the love and the power of God can begin flowing back into my life how He desires. We need to check the things that we are connected to in our lives. For some, we have connected to things that have been smothering us spiritually. We didn't intend for that to happen because the terms of use weren't clear. It seemed innocent. It didn't seem like a big deal. And we we rationalized it in our mind as it's not really a big deal. I don't really see what kind of harm this would bring. But now when I see the fruit of what I've been connected to. I'm telling you, something will be produced in my life from anything that I connect to. If I connect to the things of the world, there will be fruit that begins to be produced in my life because I have connected to a vine that is flowing into my spirit, into my life, that is producing things in me. 
That's why we can connect to things and we feel raging mad or we feel like we start struggling with our flesh in, in ways that we hadn't in months. And we connect to something that didn't really seem like a big deal, but all of a sudden, man, we can feel some chaos, some turmoil erupting in our life. It's because we've connected to a different vine and something else has started flowing into our spirit and other fruit is being produced in us. The works of the flesh. But man, if I can disengage from all of that garbage, it's not a sacrifice. I'm telling you. When we, if we could see the terms of use that come with everything we connect to in our society, and I'm telling you, most of it, I don't have my phone on me, it's down there. About 95% of it probably comes through that device right there. The things that we are connected to, whether it's entertainment, whether it's social media, whether it's news, I'm not saying get off of all that. I'm just saying we need to check what we are connected to because some of that stuff has a terms of use that has been robbing us of things that God never intended us to be without. That, that God is trying to pour in fruit and peace and joy and all this stuff into our life. And at the same time, it's being sucked out that way because we've connected to something else. When God never intended for us to connect to other, he is the true vine. He is the true source. He is my source of peace and my source of joy. Every time I feel a check in my spirit about something I'm connected to, don't ignore that voice. Don't ignore the Spirit of God that's trying to warn us about something that we're connected to that is only going to produce something in our life that's something we don't ultimately want. This is how we come to God in brokenness. We've been connected to all kinds of things, but man, we come to God and you start connecting to the things of God and you start seeing things change in your life. You start praying. You start reading your Bible. You start worshiping. You start going to church. And you are not the same person. Things have changed. Things have shifted. You have a different mindset. You have a different outlook. You have a different heart. You have different desires. You have different want-tos. It's because you have connected to something else, the true vine, that life is being sprung forth in your life. that, And it's changing everything about you. Why would I ever go back to connecting to something that will take me back to the person that God delivered me from years ago? Why would I ever connect to something that would bring back the old haunts and the old temptations and the old garbage that God designed, that de delivered me and set me free from? I'm telling you, it matters what I connect to. Just as it matters what I connect to out there, it matters even more what I connect to here. Because if I can get connected to the things of God, God will let me know when I'm connected to something I don't need to be connected to. The Spirit of the Lord will lead me in everything that I do. Every step I take, every connection I make, God will help me know. The most important connection we will ever make in our life is with our creator. And then not just connect for a one time salvation experience. Or not just connect for a one time healing. Or I have a need in my body. But I mean I connect and I never disengage. I never disconnect from the things of God. That is where abide comes in. It's where you live. You live connected to the vine. You know what happens when you remove the branch from the vine? it immediately begins to wither and die. And he said, any branch that's not connected to me or is not producing fruit, it will basically be disconnected from the vine and it will be uh, dried up and cast into the fire. I cannot afford to get disconnected to the true vine. He is the life-giving source in my life. Everything that is good flows from Him into my life. Every good thing in my life has come through that vine. It has not been something I have created or manufactured. Every good thing in my future, it's going to come through that vine that we are connected to, the true vine. If we can, if our musicians can come, I'm, I'm closing here. You know, Joseph Pauli said it, and it really stuck with me. You know, for those who haven't jumped in with both feet, God is calling us to jump in with both feet. Joseph Pauli said it. He said, we will go deep. Do you remember this? 
He said, we will either go deep in the things of the world and sin, or we will go deep in the things of God. He said, no one is going to stay in the shallows. He said, everybody is going to go deep. And when we get connected to God, when we get connected to the true vine, we go deep into the things of God. If we stay connected, when we don't go deep is when we connect and disconnect, connect and disconnect, connect and dis- we connect, we get some life, we disconnect, we start to wither. We connect, we get some life, we disconnect, we start to wither. It's this back and forth game that we do where we barely are treading water, barely staying alive spiritually because we keep disconnecting from the only source that gives us life. What God's plan, what God's desire is for us to abide in him. That this is where I live. That I do not disengage from the things of God. I do not disconnect from God. And everything in my life that would try and connect me to something else, that is what's going to wither and die. It's not going to be me. It's, it's going to be the other connections, the other vines that are trying to connect to me that would suck the life out of me spiritually. That is the stuff that's going to be put to death in my life. It's not going to be the true vine. It's not going to be the branch. I'm going to stay connected to the source. And this may help somebody. When you feel a check in your spirit and you feel like and you're rationalizing it in your mind and you're saying that this really isn't a big deal and it's okay, but just the fact that I'm having that conversation with myself, just the fact that I'm trying to reason with myself about why this isn't a big deal, I at least need to go and try and find what those terms of use are to what I'm connecting to in that moment. That if I'm having to rationalize and reason why this isn't a big deal that I connect to this, then I need to go look and see, is this going to bring chaos into my family? Is this going to bring depression into my home? Is this going to bring anxiety and fear into my mind? Is this going to bring lust and temptation and greed and envy into my spirit that doesn't need to be there? It'll help me say no to things when I realize that there's some terms of use that are hidden in that thing that I'm connecting to. That if I will read the fine print, I will see that, you know what, this isn't really something that I need in my life. In fact, what I'm seeing in the fine print, this is something that over time will rob me of my joy and my victory in Christ Jesus. And in other words, I don't want anything to do with it. Because I can't allow anything to disconnect me from the true vine. Because that is the only thing that is giving the life-giving nutrients that are needed in my life to spiritually survive. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be connected to anything in my life that will rob me of my joy. I don't want to be connected to anything in my life that will rob me of victory that I have with God. I don't want to be connected to anything in my life that will rob me of a breakthrough or a miracle that God is wanting to do in my life. I don't want to be connected to anything that will keep me from being used of God, how he sees fit. I don't want there to be anything that I'm connected to in my life that is keeping God from doing what he wants in my mind and in my heart and in my family. But man, if I can abide there, if I can connect there, if, I, if God is able to flow into my life exactly how he wants, what a change I will begin to see in my life and in my heart. If we can, I want us to pray. I want us to lift up our hands right now and I want us to begin to talk to the Lord. I'm not saying that there's something in your life right now that you need to disconnect from. I don't know what you're connected to, but I feel like God's talking to somebody here tonight. God's trying to help somebody here tonight that what seems innocent and what seems like a not a big deal, I'm telling you, he is the ultimate marketer. That product, that service is not promoted as being something that will destroy my victory in God. It's not being promoted as something that will rob me of every victory that God ever had in store for me. But it's being presented in a way that it'll bring fulfillment and contentment. But God, if there's anything I'm connected to in my life 
that Lord is robbing me of spiritual growth that is robbing me of joy and peace of mind that is robbing me of a breakthrough that is robbing me of victory that is robbing me from having the fruit of the spirit develop in my life then God right now I want to disengage disconnect Lord from everything 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 in my life God, that would keep me from walking in the promises of God. That would keep me from inhabiting the promised land in what you're leading me to. Come on, that's it right now. That thing that's been popping up in your mind. God's been dealing with you about. God's been talking to you about. It's been coming back up in your mind over and over. Maybe that's something that God's wanting you to go read the fine print on. Maybe that's the thing that's been bringing the wrong fruit into my life. God, tonight, we want to connect to the things of the Spirit. Lord, we want to connect to the true vine. God, you are all that I need tonight. God, my help, my joy, my peace, my victory. God, everything that I need. God, it's going to come through you. Come on, that's it. Connect to the Spirit of God tonight. Let the Lord begin to flow through you. Let the Spirit of God begin to work in your life here. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we want to abide in you. God, that's where I want to live. God, that's where I want my dwelling place to be. God, every day, I want to make sure that I am connected to the things of God. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. You will not regret from engaging in the things of God. You will not regret from having gotten connected to the things of God. But instead, you will see fruit begin to bear in your life. You will see stuff begin to produce in your life that you can never produce on your own. 